Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jason White. This is my channel, Jason's Weird Reads. If you like horror books, then hit the subscribe button and uh, and comment in the comments below, and we will discuss some books. All right. So a little while ago, I did a top ten horror books list, and uh, it turned out to be one of my uh, most popular videos. And there's a few things wrong with that video, like there's this weird humming sound that I don't like. And uh, so I thought I'd do another one. Why not? Uh, I love horror, and as I even said in that video, my list is always changing. This, That list isn't necessarily my ultimate top ten, and neither is this one, but these are definitely, definitely, uh, uh, they're definitely, they bounce around <laughs> in what I would consider my top ten. Because, uh, you know, I can never, every time I go to think about them, I'm like, oh, I forgot about that book. Oh, how could I have forgotten about that book? Where would I put it in the top? Eh. So, yeah, so here we go. Uh, at number 10, I have The Lesser Dead by Christopher Buhlman. I read this book uh, for Books in the Freezer readathon that they did, and they recommended it on their, uh, on their podcast, and I absolutely loved it. It's vicious, it's gory. It's uh, got, like, a, a kid as a protagonist who's a vampire. And it takes place in, like, the sewers of New York. What's there not to love? <laughs> but Christopher Bielman, really, uh, his writing is uh, is really phenomenal. Uh, I listened to this on audiobook, and it was really easy to pay attention to. It's really well done. I recommend this book wholeheartedly. At number nine... I have Video Night by Adam Caesar. This um, this story is uh, about two kids who have Video Night, what they call Video Night. It's every Friday. It's at one of their houses. Uh, the one the one friend who has like the big screen TV in their basement, and it takes place in the 80s. And they what they rent are horror movies. And it takes place in the 80s, so typically they watch 80s horror films. This was a thing, and when I, I was a kid, when uh, this was going on, you'd go to the video store with your friends and you'd pick out the most nasty movies you could find. And if you were lucky, you had an adult membership, you could rent them too. <laughs> Often I went with my mom or my uh, stepdad, they didn't care, they'd rent it. And we'd watch these films, and uh, I have very fond memories of that. So this book really brought those feels for me and uh, Adam Caesar's uh, prose was a lot of fun he really sort of brought out the whole 80s feel uh, of of what it was like to be a kid back then and watching those movies and you know what I would have read the book if it was just about that but of course there's something horrible going on it's it's kind of like an 80s film an 80s horror film all on its own I highly recommend it if you're into 80s horror films and uh, you really like the whole 80s nostalgia thing that, uh, that's been going on lately. Uh, number 8, I have The Final Reconciliation by Todd Kiesling. Todd Kiesling, uh, he wrote this novella. And one reason why I love this novella is because if you like... Uh, if, if you ever read rock uh, biopics, like band biopics or memoirs or whatever biographies this book might be for you because it's about a band not a real band but you wouldn't think so the way Todd Kiesling approaches this is he makes it feel like you're reading an actual authentic uh, uh, rock memoir and so the basic premise is uh, the band uh, they get signed and they they uh, they get a record deal they make a record and it becomes like one of the biggest records ever and uh, it's all because of a woman who started hanging out with them and dating one of the uh, one of the band members but what they don't know is that this uh, this woman isn't exactly human and I'm gonna leave it at that it's a very good book and it's kind of spooky in areas but I really like the whole rock and roll vibe to it all right and at number seven is dust devils by Jonathan Jantz. If you like westerns and you like vampires, those two things really mix well together. I've read other books about vampires out in the Old West, and this is one of the best ones, and I highly recommend it. It's very vicious. I love the vampires in this book. 
They're very vicious. Um, the first three quarters of this book are just mind-boggling. The ending didn't really wrap up so well for me, but uh, the rest of the book really made up for it, in my opinion. I highly recommend Dust Devils. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's so much fun. <laughs> Um, in that number six is The Rain Dancers by Greg F. Gafune. Now, this book, uh, it reads kind of like a play, and, and that's, uh, that's saying, that's not to insult or to take away, because the prose, if you have ever read a Greg F. Gafune book before, you know the, that the prose is very poetic, and at times it's beautiful, it's very dark, and that's not lost in this book. But uh, the basic premise is it's it you know it's raining outside really bad and um, you have a, a couple who uh, who are they're staying at a house or they're going to a house um, where the owner recently passed and uh, I think it's the daughter the the wife uh, she's going there to clean out the place because her father died. And uh, somebody knocks on the door while they're there. It's raining out really bad. It's dark and uh, it's kind of cold and miserable. And this guy claims to be a friend, an old friend of the family. He claims to have been there and hung out with the family a lot. And yet the daughter doesn't remember this guy. So what does that mean? The basic, the whole novel itself takes place in the kitchen. It's a fairly short novel. It takes place in the kitchen and the conversation that these three people have and as the conversation progresses it gets so much more intense and and it gets so intense to the point of uh, uh, it becomes terrifying and uh, the character who's not who knocks on the door and gets let in, let in uh, he's a terrifying guy <laughs> I highly recommend this book I recommend Greg Gafune if you haven't read him He's a, he's a phenomenal writer, but this this one really stuck out in my mind. I would love to see it adapted in a play or or maybe a short movie. In at number five, I have Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. This book really kept me on the edge of my seat. I was completely blown away by how, how uh, Paul Tremblay was able to create the tension he did and sustain it. And this, this book, for me, was like one long anxiety attack <laughs> and uh, if you go to the Amazon or Goodreads and look at the reviews people I don't think really understood this book I'm gonna give you a bit of a hint here so the premise of the book is uh, you have a, a family basically uh, two husbands uh, so yeah so they're vacationing um, and they get this group of people like three or four people who come to their door and they they invade the, the the invasion scene is pretty intense as well they have to fight their way in because uh they don't want you know the the two husbands automatically feel that there's something wrong with these people and so they don't let them in and uh the the tension doesn't stop there because once they get in they're like okay this is why we're here you guys have to kill out of the three of you you have to kill one of you in order for the world to survive the coming apocalypse you have to set you have to make a sacrifice and a lot of people focus on whether or not the apocalypse is actually happening because I think what Paul Tremblay does in this book is uh, he makes it real like when you're reading it it feels real and you know damn well and there's also speculation within the book of, is this real because you would question it you would obviously question it um, so he makes it feel real and uh, so they're going to question it and so the reader is going to question it as well but that's not the point of the book the point of the book is the apocalypse is happening these people they're spot on they may be they may have broken into these people's house or cabin and uh, they're using violent force to do so but they have a message and the message is real they have to kill one of them in order to stop the apocalypse that is real now, where the interesting thing comes in is what do they decide to do? And that's the whole point of the novel right there. And I think if people went into the book understanding that, then they might have had a different experience reading it. And I absolutely loved it. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's intense.
In at number four, I have The Midnight Sun by Ramsey Campbell. Now, this book is about a, a children's a children's writer who uh, who inherit, inherits an old house on the edge of a forest, and he soon begins to sense that there's something, some sort of presence out there in the woods, and uh, he finds that he is destined to uh, to help it emerge into the world. And I absolutely love this book because uh, that presence really is sort of like a, a cold, a winterness. And it wants to sort of freeze the earth. It's the best way I can describe it. And uh, he can either stop it or he can help it. And the, the, the story starts off with him as a family man. And it, it, in the middle of the book, he sends them away so he can deal with this thing. And I, I don't know, just uh, his struggle alone really reminded me of uh, SAD and what it's like to suffer from SAD. And the author may have not... Uh, intended that but it's it's there regardless and uh, that's one reason why I hold this one so close to my to my heart it's a really good book in at number three I have we have always lived in the castle by Shirley Jackson now this is a, this is a good story I really liked it it's a, it's very uh, sort of like the Ramsey Campbell story I was just talking about it's very slow burn uh, it's got a very creepy edge to it. Um, this one's about uh, two sisters who survived the death, pretty much all their family except for their uh, disabled uncle Julian. And uh, there's talk of uh, poison because uh, the other members may or may not have been poisoned. I'm going to leave it at that because uh, the story isn't necessarily about the story as it is about the characters and uh, what they've uh, lived through and what they may or may not have done and I absolutely it's a classic a lot of people point to uh, House on Haunted Hill but I would always point to this one because it's uh, well it's it's better in my opinion I like House on Haunted Hill but this one is just this one takes the cake all right so in at number two I have The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor LaBelle I am a sucker for Lovecraft stories and you know I've always been conflicted with how uh, racist Lovecraft apparently was but uh, Victor Lavelle he uh, sort of took one of his ideas one of Lovecraft's ideas that were that's considered to be one of his most racist short stories and uh, he turned it into something completely different and that's the ballad of Black Tom and uh, I absolutely love this book. It really takes the whole Lovecraftian feel. Uh, you know, it's very Lovecraftian, not just for like the things that happen in it, but the whole, the way the story is told. It feels like almost as though Lovecraft wrote it, almost. And uh, for that reason alone, uh, I think it deserves the number two spot in this list. And in at number one, I have I Am Legend. By Richard Matheson. Now, you may remember uh, if you watched my first video, that at the end of it I was like, why didn't I add I Am Legend? I had one of those moments where I was talking about books and another one popped into my head. And I was like, damn it, that one belongs on the top 10. <laughs> but oh, I didn't know where to put it in that list. And besides, I was already recording. Ooh. So I put it number one on this list because it's a classic it's uh it's one of the best vampire novels out there these vampires have basically taken over the world and uh, robert neville the main character he's as far as he knows the last man alive and he survives uh in quite dreary sit you know his existence isn't a happy one let's just say that it, and at night time the vampires come out and they taunt him and uh and they they you know they're telling him come out come out <laughs> come become one of us we want to feed on you and uh he resists and resists and resists it's a phenomenal book i absolutely love it uh you know with the, all these books i want to give them all a reread <laughs> and for obvious reasons they're all fantastic books i enjoyed my time with every one of them immensely and uh, I highly recommend all of them 
So that's it for my top 10 list. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please, in the comments, tell me what your favorite horror books are. And uh, we'll maybe get a discussion going. Alright, thanks everyone. Keep being creative, and I'll catch you in the next bookish video.